Hey, this is Philip with G6 Technology Services. In this video, I'm just going to go over a quick and easy way to get your Sonoff Basic flashed with Tasmoda. So let's get started. Okay, so let's go over our required materials. First, we have the actual Sonoff device. So we'll go over what comes in the box. We have a pack of screws. So we will need those. So we'll go ahead and put those off to the side. We have the actual Sonoff. And then it comes with some documentation, which in this case we're not actually going to need, so we'll go ahead and just put all of this off to the side. So the next thing that we'll need is some sort of little uh, serial to USB adapter. There's several that you can choose from on the Tasmoda website. I'll link that in. Uh, this one, let me see. This one is the CH340G. And this was purchased from SparkFun on Amazon. So they do have uh, an official store on Amazon, but just make sure you don't find counterfeits. Um, so you may, if it doesn't say sold by SparkFun, then just try and order it off their website or just go with a different model. So next, uh, depending on what adapter you get, you may need some sort of cable to connect it to the computer. In this case, it's a uh, micro USB to USB-A cable that we're gonna be using. And then you need four uh, jumper wires, uh, typical for use on a breadboard. This uh, kind has the male end on both sides. That's what we're gonna be using for this project. It's also um, handy to have some kind of little pry tool. This came out of some computer repair toolkit from Amazon, I think, but any kind of uh, flat blade screwdriver would work. I try to use plastic pry tools whenever I'm prying on things to avoid damaging the material. We'll also need a screwdriver. Uh, this is a combination screwdriver. It has a bunch of little bits that you can uh, change out. So we'll need um, two different Phillips head uh, sizes, I believe. So we'll find out when we get into it. I don't remember off the top of my head. So this should be all that we need uh, to get started. So I'll go ahead and zoom the camera in a little bit and we'll get to it. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is remove these protective covers they just come right off. They're not held in in any way. They're supposed to be screwed in afterwards, but from the box, they're not, so they just come right off. Okay, and now we need to use our pry tool to get into the side of the case. So find somewhere that there's a gap. I usually like to just, if you push your finger down on the inside, it creates a bit of a gap. You just slide the tool in and then just slide it down like that, and it just comes right open. So we'll put the pry tool, that bottom part of the case, grab our circuit board out of here, put the top part of the case away. And here is the inside of our Sonoff. Okay, the next thing that we'll, we'll do is connect our jumper wires to our serial to USB adapter. So let me get zoomed in a little bit further so we can see what's going on. Okay, so Here's our CH340G USB, or a serial to USB adapter. Uh, the bottom has this connector, which you can plug in your jumper cables to, or your jumper wires. The first is ground. We're not going to be using the CTS. Next is VCC, or your positive connection. Transmit, receive, and then we will not be using this last uh, pin here. It is very important to make sure that if your device has multiple power options, it is set to 3.3 volts, which you can tell here because the uh, pad in the middle and the one closest to 3.3 volts are soldered together, and the 5 volt is not connected. So it's very important to double check that, or you could damage your Sonoff device. So I'm going to go ahead and connect our jumpers to this device. Um, I am trying to work around the camera, so sorry if it comes out of frame a little bit. I'll try to do my best to keep it in frame. So your jumper wire colors don't matter, um, but I'm just gonna go with some standard colors here for ground. 
which is black. So I'll go ahead and we'll plug that in to the first position. Uh, again, we're going to leave CTS unused. Get this out of here. Next, we'll go ahead and connect VCC. Then we'll connect TX. And RX. So here we go. That is all of our connections made. We're leaving CTS out and DTR out. So now what we want to do is plug in our micro USB cable to our adapter. Okay, now we're ready to proceed. So we're going to connect our adapter to the Sonoff. Okay, so looking at the underside of our Sonoff, we'll notice these pads right here that we're going to be connecting our jumpers to. And we see that we have some similar uh, names here when we were looking at our serial to USB adapter. We have our ground TX RX 3V3, which is our VCC 3.3 volt connection. And this is going to be unused here at the bottom. So all we're going to do is plug in our jumpers to these positions. Uh, some people have recommended soldering them in. You're welcome to do that. I haven't found that it's necessary. So we're just going to insert them and then hold them in place with our finger. If you don't want to do that, you're certainly welcome to solder them into position and then remove them after the device is flashed. So I'm going to go ahead and make these connections. Okay, so here we have the jumpers are plugged into the holes. It's not actually a socket and they do fall out, so you do have to make sure to keep them pressed in. So what we have, I'll flip it over. And oh, it's backwards. Okay, here we go. So what we'll do is the ground will connect to the ground on the USB to serial adapter. TX on this board will connect to RX, so it's backwards on the uh, serial to USB. And then RX on here will connect to TX on the serial to USB. So those two are reversed, but the ground and 3V3 will go straight through. So ground to ground and VCC on the other board to 3V3 on this one. And as you can see, those pins from the jumpers are just sticking through. Uh, like I said, you are welcome to solder those. I haven't found that it's necessary. We're just going to hold them in place uh, just like this and it will work just fine. So now let's get it connected to the computer and we'll move on to flashing the firmware. Okay, so what we're gonna to wanna to do now is hold down all of these jumpers with your thumb and try to use, or just use a different finger. And what we're gonna to have to do is push this button here at the same time that we're plugging in our USB cable to the computer that will put this into programming mode. So make sure that that happens, otherwise we're not going to be able to program it. You'll have to unplug it and try again. So just try and hold down all of these, and then hold down the other thing, the button with your other finger. We'll plug in our adapter. Okay, and we'll know that it's working because the little light is not flashing. If you didn't hold the programming button in right, then the light would be flashing, trying to get you to set up the sawn off. So now that we're in programming mode and connected to the computer, I'll point the camera over to the computer so we can see how to actually get the firmware on here. But it's very important not to let any pressure go off of these pins, or the device could reset and it will no longer be in programming mode. Or if you let them go while it's flashing, then it could corrupt the firmware. Okay, so we're going to be using this piece of software called Tasmotizer. Uh, it's available for download. If you go to the Tasmota website, they will link to it. You can download it. And then once you connect your uh, son off to the serial to USB adapter and plug that into the computer, launch the program. And then where it says select port, just click refresh. And here we go, we have COM5 selected. Uh, under backup, you can save the original firmware. If you ever want to restore the uh, Sonoff firmware back to the device, so they recommend that you do that. 
Um, I have more of these that are not flashed yet if I need to grab it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, under Select Image, just go over to Release, and then we'll just use Tasmoda.bin. This device is not self-resetting, so we leave that unchecked. And then Erase Before Flashing, we want to make sure it is checked. And then just click Tasmotize. It's going to make its connection uh, with the device after it downloads the firmware. And then from here, we just wait a minute and let it do its thing. Okay, now it's saying that the process was successful and it wants us to power cycle the device. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And then we're going to unplug our serial to USB adapter and plug it back in to power cycle the device. Okay, so now that we have uh, plugged it back in, and again, we do not want to hold the programming button down when we reset the device just now. We want to let it boot up normally. So when you unplug the adapter and plug it back in, do not press down the button. So we'll let it boot up normally. So then what we can do to make things super easy is go to send config. And we can actually have it program our wireless information right from here. So we don't have to try and connect to the built-in hotspot that it creates and all that. So we'll just go ahead and hit save. Okay, device will restart. So We'll just wait for that to happen. We should get um, the light come on. Yep, the green light came on and went off, so that means it's back up and running and it's connected to the Wi-Fi. So now we can just click this green Get IP button, and here's our IP. So we can just copy that. And then if we go into Chrome or some other web browser, you can paste that IP address in there. And then we should be able to access the web interface of our Sonoff with our new Tasmoda installation. And here we go. Okay, so everything is flashed and working. We're still holding on to our jumpers. So what we're going to do now is just unplug the serial to USB adapter from the computer. Okay, and now we can let go of our jumpers and just pull those right out. And now we have our board ready to go. So we'll go ahead and put it back in the case and we'll test it out with it not being connected to the computer. All right, so to put it back in the case, what we're gonna do is take note of this hole in the case. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we can see this hole here. That's gonna be for the push button to go through. So all we need to do is flip this over and then grab our board. And then we just wanna line up the push button with the hole. Okay, it should go right in there. We have our button sticking out now. Then we'll grab the back cover, and it doesn't matter which way that goes on, so just snap that back into place. And here we go. It's all assembled. Okay, now I'd like to get the Sonoff connected to utility power so we can test it independent of the computer and just make sure that it still starts up and connects back to the Wi-Fi and then we'll toggle the relay on and off and just make sure everything is okay. So I've just got this uh, part of a computer power cord. I cut the end off and we're gonna attach that to here. So at this point, I'm obligated to say if you're not comfortable or knowledgeable enough to work with uh, you know, the utility power coming out of the wall, it can be very dangerous. So don't try it if you're not fully comfortable and understand the principles of how to handle it safely. So. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and connect this, and uh, we'll try and see uh, if it works after this. All right, so I'm going to do my best to keep this in frame. I had to move the camera a little bit. So what we're going to do is I have this Philips, uh, we're using a number zero uh, bit. So we're just going to loosen the two screws in the terminal block. Okay, and we have our neutral and live, or line. So we'll go ahead and make those connections here. Put our neutral. This is a little bit difficult. Okay, that's in there. And we want to tighten it down. Okay. 
Okay, make sure that's nice and tight, and of course that we don't have any stray strands hanging out. And we'll connect our hot wire on the other side. And it came undone a little bit, just got to twist it back up. Okay, that looks good. So I'll go ahead and tighten that down. Nice and tight. And then unfortunately this does not have a ground, so we're not going to be able to utilize that. So I'll just hang that off to the side. Uh, if you're going to do this in a permanent installation, you want to make sure that the cable jacket gets gripped inside. This is a little bit, uh, these wires are a little bit too long, but this is just for demonstration purposes and it's coming right apart as soon as we're done. So next thing we'll put our cover on. And just one thing to note, if it looked like this case came apart a little bit too easily at the beginning, then yes, you're right, I had that same concern. But what actually ends up happening is once you put these screws in here, it actually clamps the case together. So, and that's way too small. I'm gonna have to grab my other screwdriver. So yeah, this cover actually clamps the case together. So definitely make sure, you know, just for general safety in the first place that you're using these and also to help keep the case from randomly falling apart and exposing live contacts. And even though there's nothing in the other side, I'm going to go ahead and put our screws in anyway for safety. So again, we don't have potentially exposed live contacts there and to help keep the case clamped nicely together. And also, we just heard that little pop. We don't want to over tighten them because it'll misalign it. So that's kind of a negative that uh, that is even possible. But anyway, here we go. That's gonna work for now. So let's go ahead and get this connected. All right, so here's our sawn off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this plugged in. Okay, that's a good sign. There's no explosion. And you see the uh, green light there, so that lets us know that it's working. We'll go ahead and click our relay by hand. Okay, that works. And then we'll go on the computer here and we'll just refresh our page. Okay, good, that came back up. And then we'll hit toggle. And hit toggle again. Perfect, so it looks like everything's working. Uh, that's all the configuration that's required uh, from this point. So if you just wanna use it like this, then you're good to go. Otherwise, you can set it up with whatever home automation system you're using. Um, and then it should work perfectly from here on. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching, and until next time.